Hello, my name is Drew Mitchell. I am a help desk analyst at the main DOE help desk. And today we're going to be talking about editing a current staff member's assignment. And to do that, we would be in Neo. For the purpose of this video, we're going to assume you already have access to Neo. However, if you do not have access, or you need to edit your access to gain the ability to edit a staff member's record. You would email your superintendent's office and they would do a Neo access request form. If the superintendent is unaware of how to do an access request form, we do have a JIT video available as well on how to do that. So to get to NEO, you would go to any of your bookmarked links, which you can see here, or you can do a Google search. The easiest and quickest way to do a Google search for NEO is to type in main NEO login. The first link on that page takes you directly to the login page. Enter your credentials and log in. From here, you're going to click on staff at the top of the screen. And depending on what you're trying to do, you're going to either go to staff search or SAU search. Now what I mean by that is if you're trying to edit someone's highest degree earned, the only way to access that screen is to do a staff search. Even though they're currently employed at the district and will show up under SAU search, you cannot access the initial screen which has highest degree earned unless you do a staff search. Today we're going to be editing someone's staff assignment to give them an increased FTE, so we're going to do staff search, and we're going to go to the main department of education, and we're going to be adjusting Bob Buckrankle's access. Bob is a fictional character we've created to do these videos, so any information you see here is not real. Currently Bob has an FTE of 0.5. We are going to bump this up. We are going to say Bob is now doing this position as an FTE of 1, which means he's doing it a full 12 months out of the year. And once we adjust the FTE, we also need to adjust the salary. So we're going to bump this up from half to full, which is 35000 And once you've done that, you hit submit. It will save and Bob now is a full-time member doing data specialist work. If you were going in to edit their assignment to create a stipend, that shows up here by default. You would do that for the position. We're going to say Bob started a stipend on yesterday with the main Department of Education. We're going to say Bob became a bus mechanic. Years of experience in this position would be if he has any previous experience doing that, whether it's in the state or not. Bob recently got his certification through a local community college to do mechanic work, so he has no years of experience. You're going to choose W-2 employee or contractor. If you choose contractor, it removes some of the required information. As Bob is already a W-2 employee, we're going to choose that. We're going to choose whether this is district or school-wide. We're going to choose district, and we're going to choose whether this is salary or stipend. This is a stipend position that he's getting to do his additional work on top of. <coughs> Excuse me. So because it's a stipend position, we don't expect to see a lot. We're going to say Bob gets paid $5,000 to do this for about a quarter of his work time. So three months out of the year, roughly, we'll say that's what that equates to. Bob's doing bus mechanic work. There's no federal funding for this, so we're going to choose no. Not applicable to any of these educational categories because he's just a bus mechanic. And then you're going to put in his contact information. If he had an extension for this, so if there's extension to where Bob's working on the buses down in the garage at the school or at the district admin office, you would put that in so that we could get Bob directly if we had to ask him any questions. Once you finish putting in all the information, you got some options at the bottom of the screen. You have submit, which will make this an active position. You have save as pending. What that would be used for is if you weren't sure of the stipend amount based on the FTE and what he's actually getting for his stipend, you could save that as pending, come back and edit it later with that information. 
The only time this is going to affect anything is when during staff certification, the superintendent cannot certify the staff certification report if there are any pending positions. Reset will just clear the board and will reset the form completely and you can put in new information. So if you realized, oh, Bob wasn't actually going in for a bus mechanic, he should have been going in as an HR specialist, you could just reset this. It would start you from scratch. And cancel would just close out the whole thing completely and put you back on a blank ad assignment page as well. We're going to go ahead and submit this, which will then make it an active assignment. Now, another part of editing staff members' information is ending assignments. If you needed to do that at any time, you could go into the staff members' assignments listed, go to the Actions menu, and do End Assignment. This is going to ask you for the end date of the assignment, so we'll pick uh, we'll do 12-19. You can do a future date, so if you knew <clears throat> this stipend was ending later on in the year, you could go to that year, month, and day and choose that, and the position will remain active until that date. So if you're doing staff work and you know that a contractor or someone's stipend is ending in advance and you want to make sure you don't forget to end that, you can set a future end date and it will end at that time. We're going to choose 1219. We're going to click confirm to end the assignment, and we're going to click end. That ends the position and only makes his one data specialist role active. You can go underneath assignment status and choose one of these to find any of them. So if you want to be you want to see what his previous positions were, you could click on ended. And that's going to bring up any positions that Bob has held that have previously been ended. That's all there is to is adding a staff assignment. Stay tuned for how to create a new staff assignment and long-term substitute teacher.